Hello. Hello. I'm Kira and this is Matthew and Caroline. We're back with you this week. We hope you had a really good week. I have with me some coins. And let's start off with a little quiz. Your teacher, Mrs. Thompson, would be proud if you could accomplish this. What is this? Um, a quarter. A quarter, and it's worth how much? 25 cents. And this is a? Penny. And it's worth? One cent. And a? Um, dime. And it's worth? 10 cents. And? Um, a nickel. And it's worth? Five cents. Right, yes. So these are coins. So. What does it mean to be rich, Caroline? To have a lot of money. Yes. In general terms, that's what we think, that one is rich if they have a lot of coins, a lot of money. And can you be someone who's rich without a lot of money or, or even be poor? What do you think, Matthew? Yes, you can be rich in love. Yes, you can be rich in love. That's the whole point of this story. Well, part of the point of the story, that's a good answer. So you can be rich in other things other than just money. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. So we are gonna read about two very different people, a story from the Bible from the Gospel of Mark that's about two very different people. One was rich and one was very poor. And we're gonna hear about what happened with them. But first I wanna ask you, have you ever had to share or give away something that was really hard for you? Can you think? How about you, Caroline? I don't think so. I know I have, I just can't think of it. Yeah. So in our house at Christmas time, right before Christmas, what do I usually make you do? Get rid of like three things. Get rid of some things and we donate them. It, that, is that hard for you? Sometimes. Sometimes. Yeah. It seems to be, my, my recollection is, that it is quite hard for both of you to identify what you're gonna get, a, get rid of and then actually give it away. Because what happens? If it's a toy you haven't played with for a while, you'll say things like, oh, but I used to. So some of it is kind of the thought or the memories that, that what the toy kind of holds for you. Sometimes it's, I play with it like once a year, so I still don't want to get rid of it. But it's hard to get rid of things that we really love, isn't it? Yeah. How about if, if you had to share, like, you got a plate of really hot, salty french fries, Matthew, and you had a side of Heinz ketchup, and you had to share them. Would that be hard for you? You know how you are with your salty french fries, right? Yeah. Okay. So, what I want you to think about today is those thoughts while we are going to read from the Bible. And specifically, we're going to read from Mark 12, 41 to 44. Okay. So, Matthew, do you want to read this part here? Mm -hmm. Jesus sat down. Oh, wait, what's that say? <laughs> Sorry. Jesus sat down opposite a place where um, the offerings were put and watched the um, crowd putting their money into the temple. The, wait, what's that? Into the temple uh, treasury. treasury. So think about when we were able to attend church in person we had a time called tithes and offerings. So what, what happens then? We bring money to benefit the church. So the money we, we um, can or cannot, it's, it's obviously your choice, but there's a point in our worship service where um, people uh, willingly give their money in, the, in, in um, offering time. So um, when that happens, what do we pass around? The what? It's like a bowl. Yes, it's like it's gold. the gold it's offering like plate. Red velvet in the center. Right. So is that a donation to the church? Yes. 
Some people think of it that way, but actually our offering is meant to be used to further God's kingdom, to work in our community, to teach others about God. So it's not really a donation to the church. It's our way of supporting the work of our church to teach others about God. So in our story, Jesus and his disciples are in the temple, which is the holy place where they worship. And Jesus is watching people go forward and put their money into the treasury, the temple treasury, where they collect the money. Okay? Can you imagine that? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to keep going? Um, putting. Many? We're right here. Sorry. Oh, yeah. Um, many rich people threw in large amounts. Okay, so many rich people threw in large amounts. So why would you hope and expect for that? If you have a lot of money, what do you think you would do with the money? Get buy stuff. Give it. You would give the money, right? Versus keeping it. So the rich people were giving large amounts, and then what happened? But a poor window widow widow came and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few. Sense. Okay. So do you know what a widow is? No. It's someone who has lost their spouse or their partner, whoever they were married to. And so she came and she was very poor and she put in how many coins? Two. Two. Two worth a few cents. Okay. So you can see we have a rich, the rich people are giving lots of money and this poor widow gave two cents. Okay, Caroline, you want to read this for us? Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly, I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury, treasury than all the others. They gave, out all, they gave out of their wealth, but she gave out of her poverty. Put in everything all she had to live in. To live on. Okay, so if you have a lot and you give a lot versus if you have little and you give all you have. Let's talk about that for a minute. What do you think about that, Matthew? I don't know. It's kind of sad. Why is it sad? I don't know. No, it's kind of Because she gave everything she had? Uh -huh. Mm-hmm. I can see why you, why you would think that way. But did anyone force her to give? No. No. So what does that mean? No one forced her, so she did so willingly, right? Yeah, she gave all that she had. The Bible also tells us in Corinthians that when we give, God wants us to give cheerfully. So he doesn't want us to be like, I'm supposed to put in my offering, so I guess I better, or people might look at me if I don't put something in the offering plate. He wants us to give with a heart that is cheerful and willing. And I think even though you think it, it's a little sad that this old woman gave all she had, I think she gave trusting that God was going to continue to bless her and give her what she needs. And I think that when we give, whether it's our time, our talents, our money, that God blesses us and blesses us in ways that we may not even realize or see coming. So, I also wanted, as we prepare for Easter, what I wanted you to think about is that who do we receive all that we have from? So, we have beautiful nature surrounding us in Maine and all over the world, but we live in Maine. And think about, you and I went for a walk in the woods yesterday. It was beautiful, wasn't it? Who made that? Um, God. God did, yes. And Caroline, your best friend is Norman, our golden retriever. Who made him? God. And isn't he, how many times a day do you say he's so cute? 200. So we couldn't have created him. 
And I look at you two and I think, you're so cute and wonderful, but I didn't create you. Who did? God. God did. How about our Bible? God gave us the knowledge, not us, us here, but gave humans the knowledge to use trees to make paper and to use different, um, different plants and, and um, materials in our environment to make ink so that we could all have the opportunity to read the Bible. Think about our food. Did we create the seeds that make tomato plants? No, no, no. God did. But God has blessed us with all of those things that are not ours, that we didn't create. But God also blessed us with the gift of eternal life. And how did he do that? How did he do that, Caroline? What happens and what do we celebrate? What is Easter all about? Um, when Jesus came back to life. Right. So Jesus gave us the best gift in the entire world. He died on the cross so we could have the gift of eternal life. And there's no gift like that. And I think that widow willingly and cheerfully gave all she had because she was grateful and trusted that God was going to continue to bless her. Okay, so that's kind of a lot that we talked about. But what I want you to think is that God does not want you to give or to donate or to share with a whiny, begrudging heart. He wants you to do so with love and cheer. And I want to encourage you to think about that and to think about how you can give your time, your talents, your gifts, especially during Lent. What can you do to help others? What can you do to make others feel good? What can you do to help others learn about God? What can you donate? Is there some way you can spend your time helping someone in need? Is there some way that you can use a talent you have, whether you are good at artwork or good at baking or good at cleaning? What can you do to help others? Okay? All right, let's say a prayer. Dear God, we thank you for your love. And we pray that you would help us to remember during this time of Lent, but always, that you want us to give with a cheerful heart. Help us to think about the gifts that we have, the talents we have, the money, the resources we have, and help us to find ways to give to others cheerfully. And help us to never forget that in all the ways that we give, we are also honoring you. In your love we pray, amen. Have a really good week. Bye. Bye.